All right, this time we're gonna move on to basically how the Mega Squirt is attached to the car, or at least you could say how I attach it to the car, because once again, there's so many ways to do it. Uh, you can almost make up your own. Huh. But there's a general easy way to do it that I do it and is recommended. And I even drew a nice little sloppy wiring schematic there. Uh, where do I start here? Basically, we'll look at the schematic. Uh, you got a battery, and when you key on, this is the way I like to do it. You key on, it passes a relay. I usually use a 40 amp relay, and I get a fuse panel at AutoZone. And then from the fuse panel, all you really need to do is get, I run five amps to the power wires of the injector bank one, and then I run five amps to the injector bank two. And what this does is, they get power when the key's on. And then when the mega squirt is told to, where you program it, it grounds the other side of the injector wires and opens them, squirts fuel in. That is the simplest way you can put it. All it does is tell the injectors when to open. But what the mega squirt needs is a map sensor is on board. You get a vacuum line, put it in your intake manifold. You just gotta connect it to, now you don't have to, but to make this very easy on yourself, you should have a TPS, a coolant temp sensor, and not as important is an inlet air temperature. If you're building a turbo car, you should know what your IATs are because if they're shooting over 200 degrees in one second, you're probably gonna knock a piston out of the car before you have any fun. That's the part that sucks. So you can see how good your turbo is working or if your turbo is running out of breath or whatever. Let me tell you how I put this together on my car. Basically, this is the stock battery wire and this is the solenoid that used to run the Ford starter. So all I did is use it as a junction. It, it is a mess, but I don't really give a shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, there's a power wire in here that is turned, I mean, there's power going into the car. And then I have a relay. I actually have a relay panel. I have a bunch of relays in the car. I'll show you quick. LSX oil pan. In the car here, I have uh, my shifter, pain in the ass. Uh, I got a bunch of time slips and some belt information. Anyway, there's a relay board, and then when I turn my key, it turns on all of these relays, basically. Two of these relays go to, powers one of these fuse boxes, powers one of these fuse boxes. Now, this is a mess again, I really don't care. Uh, it's in my glove box. Car runs great. Ha! This is exactly like what I showed you. They sell these, basically this will come from the relay. When you switch on the power, it powers this fuse panel. I love using these, it's very simple. It's easy to keep things relayed instead of burning wires down. Basically, over here is what's going to the mega squirt. There's a, uh, that's too hard to see, I'm sorry, I'll just use this one. Here's what you would use, like five amps here, five amps here, and these power wires will go out into the harness. Now, you would run them out, and here's my mega squirt harness. So basically in here, this mostly runs all the injectors. In here are big power wires loomed in. And what happens is, on GMs mostly, if you use a GM or other connectors, there's gonna be pink and green, and there's gonna be pink and blue, and there's gonna be pink and whatever. These are off of Volvo, so there's a common, like a green and some orange and white, and then there's a green and yellow and white, and a green and purple and white. So what you do is you take, I find it easiest, you can do this either way, because the injector is basically a solenoid, you can power a ground either side, it doesn't matter. I take the common color and I make it power. So if this was pink or green, and the green is on all of them, I take these wires, and you connect them all together, and you crimp it into a big connector here, you can see that this is the power wire from the car. That's what's giving the injectors power. And out of a mega squirt harness that you would buy, there's two wires for the injector driver. Now there's a whole reason behind that, but it's basically to make the harness easier to connect to the ECU. Don't ask. Here's the power wire here, going to the other injector bank. It's powering one side of the wires, and the mega squirt is grounding the other wires to fire the injectors. 
Now all I did is with this junkyard motor is here's the TPS sensor right down yonder. It actually matches the wires on the mega squirt harness. There's a 5 volt output wire and then a 5 or a TPS reference wire. They go back into the mega squirt. It's easy to connect it to the harness. On an LS engine down in here is the coolant temperature sensor. And then what I did is I drilled out the side of my LS1 intake and jammed the IAT sensor in there and put use two part epoxy and it looks like it came with the damn car but all of this combined when the car is colder and you first start it it needs more fuel and then the coolant temperature sensor adds that obviously and it has a slow rate of decay it might add 40 percent up here and when you start it it decays and adds until it hits about 160 degrees and doesn't add any fuel and the car is warmed up and ready to go the TPS sensor well, again, you can make these mega squirts run without a TPS and shit, but it's very accurate for throttle movement and acceleration enrichment because when you stab the gas pedal, if it's just running off the map and has no excel enrichment, it'll cough, it'll go lean when all the air comes rushing in and there's no fuel until it hits the part of the map where it's okay. So uh, for real crisp revs and clean driving and most importantly flooring it up into boost, in and out of boost, it splashes a little bit of gas in there so you don't knock a ring land out of the car. Uh, the only other thing you need is, I'm running an MSD box, you need a tack signal. The Megasquirt has to see RPMs. If it never sees the motor spinning, it'll never fire the injectors. It goes, you aren't doing shit, I'm not doing shit. That's basically how they talk to each other. So, on the Megasquirt box, there's an RPM tack signal wire. Now there's Again, of many ways you can do this. Uh, you can hook up a mega squirt to hook up with a hall sensor, or it'll read teeth, uh, crank trigger, cam trigger, all sorts of stuff. On a car with a distributor, you hook it up to the coil wire where you'd hook up a tachometer. MSD box that I use is 6010 that runs all the stock coils. I'll make videos for that later. It's a whole separate fiasco. I don't want to overwhelm anybody watching the videos, give them too much information and too little time. The MSD box that runs the stock coils, which is what I use, has a tack output wire where you would hook it up to do anything, shift light, nitrous kit, all that shit. You take that tack output wire, plug it into the mega squirt, and it sees RPM. This is the only time where you connect the MSD and the mega squirt together. They have no other relationship other than the MSD box in here. As the output wire goes into the box, it says, hey, I'm, I'm spinning, do your shit, work your voodoo magic in here. And then it goes, okay, and that's fine, it all works. Uh, off of the fuse panel also, that's how I move out of the way. You would do, you know, injectors, five or 10 amps, injectors, five or 10 amps, two amps, I think it's two and a half amps, kind of ridiculous. Just give it two or give it five, uh, give it 20, who cares? Mega squirt box, MSD box, and then you might even have two extras here for like your Y band and something else. That's why I ran so many. I mean, I have like boost controller and all that crazy shit in here too. And I even have, I fused the stock cigarette lighter because that was burned out and wasn't working. And uh, this car doesn't seem to have a fuse panel. It has some burnout shit up in the front. But anyway, I hope that makes sense a little bit more sense seeing how this shit works. This is from the back of the intake manifold. It's this vacuum hose and it goes into some T fittings here and that's how it goes into the MSD box. Well, the MSD box can see boost and move timing around and then the other one goes into the car obviously and some go to my boost controller and I want to make a vacuum tree but all that's not important but I hope you can see how simple I mean it does not take very many wires. You run power here and then there's two that get combined to drive the injectors for the left bank, power wire. These drive the right bank. I just fire bang, 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 and that's all it does, and it runs fine. Yeah, you would think that maybe batch fire would be shitty, but it runs great. And then the only other wires are coolant temp, TPS, has three, and inlet air temp. And really, you can ground all of those together. You ground all it reads is a resistance off one side of the sensor. So one wire goes into the ECU, one wire goes into the ECU, and five volt reference, and then 
another zero to five volt potentiometer sensor goes back. You know, half a volt is like zero TPS, and then four and a half volts or whatever. These are these are just rough estimates. Every car is a little different. That would be closer to wide open. And then you take the ground wire from here, the ground wire from here, and the ground wire from here, and connect them all to the ground on the Megasquirt harness. There's one ground wire on the Megasquirt harness. It's called the sensor return. It's out of the five or six black wires, it has a white stripe. And you, I just connect all the sensor returns to that ground into the ECU, and everything works peachy keen. It works great. But that's really all there is to it. You key on, you give a fuse panel some power, the fuses power the injector side in the ECU. The ECU sees three sensors. Well, MAP sensor is one of them, and the TAC input is another. So five sensors total is all you need to wire. That's pretty awesome. And then it'll see like 20 inches of vacuum, and it'll read 23 pounds of boost. It's a two and a half bar sensor. It'll read 255 kPa, roughly 23 pounds of boost. So you've seen videos where I just pedal into the throttle all the way in the vacuum, all the way to 22 pounds of boost. No problem. Uh, once you get it tuned in, this thing runs great. Uh, next, probably tomorrow I'll get some video of this car running. I just put different cylinder heads on the car to try to make some more power and see what happens. But that's another whole thing. I will show some tuning, how the Megasquare works, uh, the interface, what happens when you start the car, everything else. It's like... <coughs> It's, I was going to say it's like 11, but it's actually midnight. But that's it. We'll see if you guys have any other questions. I'm sure a lot of you will be like, holy shit, that's easy. I've never seen a video like that, blah, blah, blah. Because there are so many confusing as fuck Megasquirt videos. If you search, all you're going to find is three second clips of dudes flooring cars and doing nothing. You'll never see probably a wiring diagram draw drawn like a three-year-old with a Sharpie marker on a head gasket. This is from a Felpro head gasket. <laughs> but uh, I hope it's much more simple. I hope I explained a decent amount without rambling too much. And uh, you got a decent overview of how simple it is to control those injectors. Uh, using any other kind of ignition is fine. You can have a shitty old car with a distributor and plug in that tack wire and it'll fire the injectors no problem. Pretty awesome. All right, I'll try not to, I don't know how long this is, probably 10 fucking 15 minutes or something like that. Later.